Hi, be all of you very, very welcome. My name is Hernan Julio, and with our producer, Francisco Rodriguez, we will be your guides in this new virtual experience at the European Southern Observatory, or ESO. These visits, as you may know, are a new experience for everyone. So your question will be always very, very welcome. At the end of the tour, we will give you a survey so you can send us your comments. In the next hour, we will travel to the Antofagasta region in the northern Chile. We will virtually visit ISO Paranal Observatory, which is at 2,000 at 600 meters above the sea level. Anyways, today is a very, very special day. Jesus Corral Santana is with us. Jesus is an ISO astronomer who works at Paranal Observatory, the one that we're going to visit today. And at the end of the tour, uh, he will give us some more detail about his astronomical research. So, Jesus, be very, very welcome to, and also thank you very much for to be with us today. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we invite you to send us your questions. I imagine you may have a few already. Uh, Jesus, Francisco and I will be waiting for them. Uh, for this purpose, from now on, you can leave your question in the comment section on Facebook or YouTube. You can write your question anonymously, or you can give your name and city, and we will mention them during our tour. Francisco, Jesus, and I will be expecting your questions. But now let's begin our journey. Let's go to Paranal Observatory, virtually, of course. In your screen, you can see two main images to the left, we have we find the map, uh, and we will see where exactly is uh, the the VLT, the Paranal Observatory, who host the VLT telescope. Well, we are in South America, as you know, Chile is this um, long and skinny country in the edge of the Pacific Ocean. Okay, and in the northern Chile, we are right there where the dot is. Um, let me get closer so we can see the cities close to, to, to the observatory. First, Santiago de Chile, which is our capital down here. Uh, we're about uh, 1,300 kilometers to the observatory. Um, the, one of the major cities close to the observatory is Antofagasta. Uh, actually, the observatory is at 130 kilometers south from Antofagasta and only 90 kilometers north from Taltal. Taltal is uh, one of the closest cities to the observatory. So if you are from abroad, um, our suggestion is when you come to visit us, come to Santiago de Chile and then you can drive or fly to the north of Chile to Antofagasta and from there you can go to our observatory. The observatory actually is very close to the ocean, okay? And by the way, the Pacific Ocean um, has a current, the Humber current. It's a cold current which is coming from Antarctica. It's very important for us because uh, this uh, Humber current produces uh, a very special situation with this cloud. Let me show you the cloud here at your left. This, this image is looking to the west right now, and you can see that carpet of clouds. That, that uh, clouds are almost always there. Uh, they don't go over 1,000, 1,100 meters above the sea because the Humber current keep them down. And as you see, we are very close to the ocean. The Pacific Ocean is under that clouds, and we're at 12 kilometer, kilometers in a straight line to the ocean. Okay, so the other important things to tell you is that we also have a um, mountains very close to the ocean. We call it the Coast Mountain Range. Uh, you can see it here in this picture at your right. This is the um, Coast, Coast Mountain Range, who also help us to keep those clouds down there. Uh, uh, that's the reason why we have here about 300, more than 300 clear night per year. In the other side, to the right or to the east, we will have the Andes Mountains. 200 kilometers to the east, we have uh, the Andes Mountains, the La Cordillera de los Andes, who also is very tall, around six meters. Um, the mountains can go in the Andes Mountains to 6,000 meters above the sea. So this uh, mountain help us also to keep all the clouds that are coming from the east, um, they, they stop them. 
So that way, in that way, we have this uh, corridor. Atacama, the Atacama Desert become a corridor uh, with almost no cloud during the year. That's why uh, this uh, place is one of the best places for optical astronomy in the world. Well, actually, we are right now in the telescope platform of Paranal. Paranal is the name of the, of the mountain. And what you're looking at right now to your, um, in your screen is the VLT, the Very Large Telescope. The Very Large Telescope is composed by these four main telescopes. We call them UTs, or Unit Telescope. UT1, 2, 3, and 4 from left to right. But they have also special names. They have, it's the, the first one is called Antu, Melipal, Kujen, excuse me, Melipal, the third one, and Jipun. These are Madu, Mapudungun names, okay, from the native, from the southern Chile. So we're very proud to have um, this, uh, these names. We, we, we have, they have these names. Another thing, before I forget, I have to show you this small telescope, sort of a small telescope to the left, this small one, round dome that you see here. Um, they are the auxiliary telescope and they have a 1.8 meter diameter meter in the inside, the main mirror from this telescope. And we have four of them. Uh, in this picture, we can see three of them. Here we go. So we have the three. So we have the four ones, which are the VLT, the Very Large Telescope, plus the four small ones, which are the VLTI, the Very Large Telescope Interferometric. Let's, uh, I want to show you, make a close up here and Give, a, give you an idea of the size of the of these uh, buildings, the domes. You can see the man walking right in the center of the uh, telescope platform and also a car. That gives you an idea how tall are these buildings. Actually, around 25 meters, um, they, each, each of one of them. That means um, about a um, building of seven or eight floors. Okay, so that will give us a good idea of uh, where we are. And but before that, I want to welcome everyone. And maybe there is already some comment, uh, Francisco. I don't know if you have any 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 comments. Hi, and then, yes. Uh, well, uh, hi to everyone who is watching us in this moment. Uh, I just want to mention some countries that we are watching um, randomly, of course. We have from Brazil, India, Turkey. Of course, Europe, there's a lot of part of Europe um, from Germany, Italy, um, also from Argentina, Egypt. Well, thank you all from the US. I'm seeing now Belgium. So thank you very much. Please, uh, today, as Hernan said, we have a very special guest. Jesus is with us. He is working most of the year at Paranal and he can answer all your questions, questions that we at, at, at least maybe we cannot answer in other tours. So please um, take advantage of Jesus in that sense. So, uh, I, and of course, at the end of, uh, of the tour, we will have a, a little bit of um, time with him, exclusively with him to, to answer his questions. So just send us uh, your questions. And um, um, let's continue with the tour and then uh, I'll be gathering all the, all the questions in the meantime. All right, uh, just uh, give you a panorama of where we are. It's a real special place, a balcony for the Atacama Desert. We're in the heart of the Atacama Desert, and now we're going inside of the Melipal, the VLT UT3, to take a look uh, from the inside of the telescope. Here we are, as you can see, it's a gorgeous uh, telescope. Um, let me give you also a 360 degrees panorama here. Um, well, you can see how big it is, especially because at your right, you have some engineers, they're working, uh, this is the, it's a day, a day picture, we, we took this picture in the day, and the engineer in the day, they make sure to have everything working as it should be for the night, checking on the system, etc. So you can see how big it is. Right now, we're in the fourth floor of the building, of the dome, inside of the dome, right in front of the main mirror, okay? Um, the main mirror or the main mirror of the telescope is the heart of the telescope. Okay? Uh, let me, because we're in front of it, we go, we make a close up to the mirror and you will be able to see how beautiful is this mirror. Here we are, this is the mirror. The mirror is 8.2 meters in diameters, okay? 
and it's a very thin mirror. It's like a pancake, actually. It's like an um, 8.2 meter pancake with only 17 centimeters thick. So the mirror also has a cure, a little cure, and it's, um, uh, has a coating, okay, aluminum coating. Is this a coating? The one that's why you're seeing that the mirror is reflecting part of the dome. And the aluminum is the is very thin. It's a, like a thinner the, the amount of aluminum. The, this is I like to say this is like a skin of aluminum over the mirror. It's very thin, thinner than a human hair. Okay, the aluminum allow us, of course, to reflect the light from the stars and capture it. Um, another important piece here is this cell we call the main mirror cell. Okay, it's very important because the Miro also has a new technology. The Miro um, has a active optic. Active optic, um, to talk about active optic, I would like to invite you to go down these stairs, downstairs, and be right here, be underneath the Miro, okay? This is the, the cell, the M1 cell right here. And the mirrors over there. So, what's what is the active optic? Well, actually, it's like a it's like a bed. The, the mirror is 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 is, um, be, is holding this this uh, cell is holding the mirror, and we have some piston underneath the mirror. Okay, this piston, if you see these square boxes, well, there is in each of these um, boxes there is a piston or actuator. This actuator, which is the technical name, push up the mirror in order to keep always the surface perfect. That means that the surface during the night, while the astronomer are observing the object, the star, the galaxies, the mirror could suffer some 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 difference in the, in the surface of the mirror. So then the, the, the computer will detect that and will correct it. Is no way you could you can detect that with your human eyes, but the computer does uncorrected. That's the active optic. Um, before we leave this place, I want to show you because we're here. This here is the symphony. This symphony, this tank, actually is an instrument. An instrument is a camera, a digital camera. They work. This instrument work like your regular camera that we use every day, or the one that we have in our cell phones now. Um, they they will capture the light and will send the light by fiber optic to the control room where the astronomer works. Okay, uh, how the how the telescope does that? How we capture the light of the stars? Well, uh, we will have for that we will have to go up to the fourth floor again to to see this uh, how this works. Well, we have uh, the we have the telescope here and the main uh, the the main. Um, piece of the mirror are the main mirror, the one that you already know, the secondary mirror, which is up here in this black tube, in the, the back part of this black tube, right here. And then we have a third mirror, which is right in the center, a little bit over the main mirror. Okay, the third mirror is in 45 degrees, okay? Uh, so how do we capture the light? Well, first of all, as um, you can imagine, we need you have a window open at night. Same thing that if you want to look to the star in the night from your house, you have to open the window, and also you have to open your curtain. Actually, we have a curtain here. This white thing that you see here is a curtain. And we put it down or up depending of if it's needed for, uh, during the night if there is some wind. It's a wind chill, actually. It's not a curtain, it's a wind chill. And this is the door that we open right here. This is the door and the, this door is a slicing door so from the center is open to the sides but not only in the front of front part of the dome but also goes up almost to halfway to the roof of the of the telescope or the dome to here so we open all that down okay so while we have opened that window we have to point the telescope of course to the window in order to receive the light from the stars uh once we have opened the window we have a point we have point our telescope the light will go inside of the main mirror to the main mirror which is here and because the main mirror has a little cure will be and of course the, the aluminium will reflect that light that beam of light to the secondary mirror right here the secondary mirror will concentrate that light in a beam of light and will take the light and will send it back 
to the center here, to where we have the hole. The mirror has a hole in the center. As I told you, it's like a big pancake and has a hole in the center. So the light will go through here and uh, the symphony, the instrument will capture that light and will send that light, that information, that data to the control room. But we not only have that instrument, the symphony, we also have two more instruments. For example, to the right, we have in this case, Vimus, and on the other side, we have another instrument. So when the light comes down, uh, we can stop the light or reflect the light with the third mirror, which is in 45 degrees, to the right, to Vimus, or to, this, or to the left. Why is that? Because then the astronomer will have three different instruments to gather the light and send it to the computer room where they work. Um, why we need two or more instruments? Well, the idea is to capture also some light that we, our eyes cannot capture. 21 century technology allows us to um, be able to gather the light, the visible light, but also, for example, ultraviolet light or infrared light. So the astronomer during the night will be able to use, uh, let's say, one hour Vimus, and in the other hour will be use Symphony, etc. In that way, he will get some more information from other uh, spectrum light uh, than just visible. From here, the light will go to the control room. But before to continue, I think it's time for some question or comment, if there is any, please. Well, we have a lot of questions, but I. Um, I, I guess mo most of them are from Jesus, so maybe he, we we will invite to Jesus to the to this journey. Um, so Jesus, uh, it's related to to the telescope. Let give me a second to open them. So it's related to your job in the sense when you start to work with the telescope. If you can tell us a little bit about your journey or your routine during the day. Yeah, well, it really depends on the on the duty that you have. Um, there are, let's say, two different types of duties. Uh, one is the day duty, in which uh, uh, we analyze all the data that were taken during the, the previous night. We analyze that they were taken right, that all the calibrations that we need for the, for, for the science are OK. And in that case, we wake up um, at 7 in the, in the morning and wait uh, and work until until sunset. If, on the contrary, I'm assigned to a night duty, uh, meaning that I'm I'm assigned to the telescope, obtaining the data, observing during the night, we usually start at sunset and uh, we work until until sunrise, a little bit earlier, a bit a little bit before the sunrise. Here we have another question. So, did you enter to the telescope during the night or during the day, Jesus? During the day, we usually go into the telescope. Basically, most of the engineers are working there, uh, fixing issues that happened the night before, or uh, working on the maintenance problem uh, issues that the telescope may may have. During the night, we don't enter uh, inside the dome unless there is uh, something happening inside. Um, otherwise, we stay in the in the control room, which is a, a different building that I uh, will show in a few minutes. There's another question. So how can I work here, it means in Paraná, in a science job? <laughs> so many are wondering how you, how do you do it? Well, you have to study a lot, uh, I guess. Uh, no, it's, uh, I mean, you, you study your degree in usually in physics or in astronomy, and then you uh, do your, your uh, master in science or your PhD, and, and then apply for a job at, at the observatory. Uh, all the astronomers that work there are, are uh, have a PhD, so you have to finish all the all the different levels in, in physics or astronomy before applying to to a job in at ESO. This is a very technical question. I don't know if we have the answer because we have many many type of of instruments, so there's no uh, unique um, answer. So, what size is the sensor of the cameras? I guess of the instruments. Um, uh, size in the physical size, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I know the size in, in the sky. Okay. Uh, it depends on the instrument. There are instruments that can cover most of the of the light that enter in the 
uh, in what we call the field of view of the of the instrument. Uh, if I write the the field of view of the of the Nasmith platform, which is that big one that is in the on the right, it's around fourteen arc minutes. Arc minute is a unit that we use in the sky, but I don't know the size in in physical units. I mean in common units. Perfect. No, no worries. We have a lot. We are receiving a lot of questions. Um, so let's continue with the tour, Enan and Jesus, and because we have a lot of to, to show. Well, thank you very much, Jesus. Uh, Jesus, right now is, is is not in Chile. It's in Canary Island, very warm place. So thank you very much, Jesus, for being with, with us, con sharing your 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 experience. And well, we will go to actually want to invite you to go straight where uh, Jesus work at night or day, depending on his uh, shift. Uh, so for that reason, we have to get down out of from the Melipa, the unit three here, and walk to this uh, um, this uh, control room building, which I'm going to show you right away. Um, here we are. This is the control room, um, the building, and the control room right is uh, at the right uh, wing of this building. So let's go inside and see where uh, usually uh, Jesus work. Here we're inside of the control rooms, and we have um, well, we have the four control room for the four telescope. At your right, have number four. At your left, number two, number three. Excuse me, and we will go to number. Two, because I think uh, Jesus work at number two, right, Jesus, or number one usually. Yeah, I usually work on both of them. You uh, UT one and UT two. Oh, great! So here you can see at, at your right you have UT one and two, and at the right uh, UT two Kuyen. Uh, at night you will have uh, two two person working in this control. At least two person, which one is the operator. The operator is the pilot of the of this um, this ship. Yeah, he send the the telescope to different parts in the universe, and the astronomer is the one who is checking all the system, is checking all the the information, all the data that is getting in the computers, making sure that it's the right one, or making the change that is needed for for the night. Uh, I don't know if there is any question that we could answer here, uh, Francisco. Before. Yes. Um, this is um, a little bit, um, well, for both of this, um It's from Robert. He's asking about the auxiliary telescope, the ones that we saw at the beginning of the tour, the little ones, well, sort of little ones. Um, so the, the four auxiliary telescopes, are they used only for interferometry together with the large unit telescope, or they can be used independently? Well, they, they use independently, as far as I know. Yeah, yeah, they work independently during a normal night. Let's say uh, the four UTs work uh, in a standalone configuration, so they work independently. And the ATs, the auxiliary telescopes, are working together between them. The four ATs work combine the light and go into the interferometry uh, lab. Uh, on a different night, we can use the big, the four big telescopes and combine their lights. But in that case, we don't use the, the small ones. So in summary, either we use the four small telescopes together and combine the line, or we use the four big ones and combine their light, but they don't work. We, we don't combine the light of the small and the big one at the same time. Great. There is keep asking us about what qualifications do you need to work in Paranal, eh, Jesus? Yeah, they, it seems like they want your job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> in my case, I'm uh, I have a PhD in astronomy, so you you need to obtain your your PhD in in astronomy, astrophysics, or physics. Uh, uh, but uh, I mean, astronomers are just a part of the of the crew of the whole crew that work and at Pranal. Most of the people are engineers and other. Uh, experts, operators, uh, there's a lot of people also helping us to deploy our job. So in, in a normal day, there are 150 people working uh, in Paranal. Uh, it depends on, on, on what you would like to do. Uh, if you want to stay inside the telescope fixing things, uh, any, any type of engineer 
uh, if you want to be an astronomer, then you have to follow the, the, the scientific career and then obtain a PhD in physics or astrophysics and then uh, well, be, be an astronomer there. Perfect. Let's continue with the tour. I'm, I'm, I'm saving all your questions uh, for the people who's watching us. So, um, and we will, we will have time with Jesus uh, in a couple of minutes. Well, anyways, I want to let you know that um, if you want, before to come to work with us, maybe you want to visit us. Uh, of course, today, because the worldwide situation, we are closed, but um, in normal days, and we hope to be back in norm normal again in, a couple, in the next months, we have visit every Saturday. You can come to Paraná Observatory and take a tour, the same tour that you are taking now virtually, you can take it um, uh, here with us. Uh, so that uh, means that you have to book uh, in our webpage, iso.org, and we will show you this, uh, and you will be able to walk in this platform. Uh, it's only Saturdays at 10 o'clock and 2 p.m. And because it's only Saturdays, we are not, um, and because we have a um, scientific activity in the night, we cannot show you, you cannot stay that night in Paranal. But today, because we are in a virtual tour, we can do something very special thanks to technology is showing you how the sky looks at Paranal at night. Here we are, as you can see, it's um, a little bit after sunset, and the, the telescope are open, waiting for total darkness in order to start the observation. Let me show you a little bit the, this sky, this is a gorgeous sky here. And first of all, the first constellation that we can distinguish here is this Big constellation is called the Hunter, the Orion, Orion constellation, the Hunter. Okay, and uh, maybe you don't see a Hunter, so let me help you with the with with your imagination here. Uh, first of all, what we have is uh, what we can see here is these three uh, stars. In Latin America, we call them Tres Marias. Um, I don't know if it's the same in Spain, Spain, but um, Tres Marias are the is the um, Orion belt the belt of the hunter. So from here, let me help you with one leg here, the other leg of the hunter, and then we have the, the, the shoulder, one shoulder and another shoulder. So that's the body of the hunter. I know that you need a very good imagination for this. But anyways, however, uh, the hunter, because we're looking to, the, to this constellation from the southern hemisphere, the hunter is upside down. The head of the hunter is right around here, should be around here, and here's one of the arm, and in front of it, uh, of him, is, uh, is the, the shield of the hunter. But the hunter is not only alone in the sky, he's also with his good friend, the, 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 the big dog. Here we have the constellation, the big dog, I know, and let me help you with the, your imagination again. This is the eye of the um, of the dog, okay? Sirius, the star Sirius. This is the back part, one leg, another leg, the tail. So this is the big dog or Canis Majoris constellation. They're always close together because they're very good friends. But um, let me show you also this uh, amazing, this amazing picture, how we can see the Milky Way, okay? All this river of stars is the Milky Way. And um, I want to go actually to the south, to those that are from the northern hemisphere. Let me show you. Let me show you the, the southern sky. I guess uh, Jesus is already missing <laughs> this southern sky eh? now that he's uh, in Canary Island. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so let's see. This is a, this is the southern, the, this, right the southern part. This is a nice story about it. First of all, we can see these uh, clouds to the right here. These clouds are no clouds. Today we know that these are two galaxies, two small galaxies, the Magallanes cloud, that are uh, satellite galaxies to our own galaxy, the Milky Way. They're tr they're going around uh, our own Milky Way. Um, Hernando de Magallanes, that's why we call them uh, Magallanes Cloud, he saw them for the first time when he crossed, um, navigating to the south, he crossed this, the, the Ecuador. And he was able to see these two clouds and 
was very helpful for him because he found out that using these two clouds, he could find the south. Let's do that. First, if you go from the main cloud, the, the large Magallanes cloud, to the small Magallanes cloud, and you make a triangle, okay? A perfect triangle, you will have in this point the southern celestial pole. What is the southern celestial pole? Well, it's the point where all the stars going around during the night. If you stay looking to the star from the Takama Desk, you will see how these stars are going around this point. They are circumpolar. It means that they never set if you are in the southern hemisphere. However, um, that help you to find the south. Actually, if you take a line down to the horizon, you will have the the uh, the, the southern. The, you will be able to follow the south. Um, we have another uh, another way, another tip for you for to find the south. Uh, if you come to Chile or you come to the southern hemisphere and you get lost, well, you can take the southern cross. Also, here we have the southern cross. And you can take the longest stick of the Southern Cross and make it longer, three and a half times. Let's say one, two, three and a half. We go right in the same point where the triangle with the Magallanes clouds point. So that way you never will get lost and you can navigate in the Southern seas uh, if you come down here. That's the way how the Western civilization uh, used to um, uh, see the sky. You know, we take this point of light and we make a cross, for example. But um, in Latin America, we also have we we also have a very good civilization, a great civilization that they were very good astronomers too, and they have this gorgeous sky as you can see. Especially the Milky Way it was so bright for them because they didn't have any light pollution that they were able to see in this uh, in some dark uh, point spot, some dark spot in the Milky Way that they call them constellation. Here, for example, we have uh, the frog constellation for the pre-Columbian station. Uh, also, we have a very another very nice constellation here. We can see only the head of it is the Lama constellation. For example, here we have the head of the Lama, the neck of the Lama, and the body is under the under the horizon right now. However, the um, this uh, star here, which is uh, Alpha Centauris, the closest star to our own sun, um, is the eye of the Lama. That's Beta Centauris, and of course here is the, the Southern Cross. So that was the way how the the our pre-Columbian people uh, ancestors were able to see the sky. And you know we could be all day long looking to this uh, beautiful sky, but we had to go back to our our tour to to the 21st century, and back here. Uh, I don't know if there is any question, comments, um, Francisco. Or we just um, don't, we have a lot, lot of lot lot of greetings uh, and thanks for for the knowledge. There are many people um, comparing their sky to the sky that you are showing now. For example, well, from Brazil, they are saying that also they call it Tres Marias. Ah, great. So um, nice and know. people Thank from you. India also, what kind of constellations? For example, Astro. Um, is telling us, I love how you can so easily see the cold stack and the nebula in cracks. So they're very wonder about the, the magical night sky at Paranay. Well, let's continue then. Um, before we forget uh, to be very specific, how the how the VLT and the VLTI work, how these four big telescopes work, and how the four small telescopes work, right? Um, so the four big ones are the VLT. We can point the four of them at the same time to the same object. Let's say this star, and doing that, we will be able to have a tele a, a mirror equivalent to a sixteen meter telescope. This is one of the most advanced telescopes in the world, but we also have interferometry. Interferometry is means that we can point two telescopes at the same object, and we will create a virtual mirror equivalent to the distance between the first one and the second one. In this case, it's one the maximum is 130 meters from the Antu and Jepun. That means that we can create 
130 meter diameter, virtual meter diameter. So I think we have a, um, oh, here we go. We will show right now the, um, the, the, the video where we'll show how this works. Uh, we will do it again so we can explain this even better. We have the four big ones. We can point them to one object at night, of course, and then we will make this virtual mirror in resolution. Resolution means the quality of the image. Also, we can use the four small one, as Jesus told us, and we can create this 200 meter um, uh, virtual mirror. How we do that? Well, the light from the, from the telescope will go through these tunnels, underground tunnels, to one point. Here in the center, we have the, the um, interferometric lab, where all the light get together, and then from here, the light will go to the control room, okay? And, and with the four, they work independently, as Jesus explained us. You can, we can use the four big one, and or the four small ones. And the lights will go with these uh, delay tunnels. The idea is to make that the light from the telescope meet at the same nanosecond in the interferometry lab. Uh, and because we are in the, this virtual tour, I can show you something that I cannot show you when you come during the day, during in, in any Saturday, uh, which is uh, invite you to go to the underground tunnels. This here we are. We are underground the the, the mountain right now, and inside there we have this tunnel. It's a mix of tunnels, um, mirrors, laser and very high technology, 21th century high technology, in order to get all that light. The, it, they are the dim of light. We send the dim of light to the same point, so it's not an easy task, okay? And from there, the, from the interferometric instrument, we send the light to the computer room, where Jesus work every night. Um, let's go back to the surface again, and I think, it's about time to to go down to the um, to the residencia. But uh, I don't know if there is any questions so far. May, I imagine there is many. So yeah, there is a lot of questions. Uh, but I think uh, it's time for Jesus. I think he can answer yeah. this the, the most of them uh, because mainly are addressed to him. So um, I'm going to put uh, Jesus and you on the screen. In the meantime, you can go down and show a little bit more. Um... Perfect. All right. We will go down from the, we are at 2,300 meters above the sea in the top of the mountain. And we'll go to the our base camp, okay? Because uh, we want to uh, show you a very special place where we can relax a little bit. Um, here is the base camp. We have warehouse here, the gymnasium and other stuff. Uh, but we want to go and talk to talk with Jesus about um, about his work. This is the, we go inside of residence. The residence is the place where we uh, the people that work at Panana rest, um, eat, of course, sleep. It's a very special place. Uh, we have this green garden in order to help us to see some green because uh, we are, most of the people work here seven days at the Parana Observatory, so they need to see uh, some green. And also we have a little pool here who give us some more humidity to, to the schools. So from here, we want to invite Jesus to answer all the questions or most of the questions that we have from our guests today. Yes, Jesus, the first question is, um... What kind of technology does the telescope have to cope with the Earth rotation and to focus on one particular object? It's a little bit technical, but how does... Uh, go ahead, sorry. No, no, it's okay. Uh, well, following uh, the, the the Earth rotation is relatively easy. You just need uh, uh, to align the telescope perfectly. In this case, the telescopes have an alti simultal structure so you have to follow the, the the movement of the the movement of the star is the earth which is moving actually uh to 
uh, move the telescope in, in the two axes in order to uh, counterbalance the, the, the rotation of the Earth. That, that part is relatively easy. Um, the other question was about not only the Earth rotation, but... Yeah, it's how, how you can cope with the Earth rotation, what kind of technology do we, do we have? And how do you focus in one particular object? Yeah, well, uh, once you once you uh, are moving the telescopes, uh, balancing the Earth rotation, you can focus in the in a single object, and then we have um, what we call the the guide system. So we are in the area of our target, and we use nearby stars. And uh, we have a part of the light that goes into the into the instrument is deviated to a, a different instrument, what we call the, the guide camera. The guide camera focuses uh, on a nearby star, which is very close to the to the real target that we want to study. And uh, well, internally with the, with the software, we can try to uh, put that guide star always in the same uh, position of the camera. And uh, Doing this way, uh, we can send small um, offsets to the telescope in the sense that uh, keeping the star in the same position allows us to keep the telescope exactly in the position of the of the target. We can um, send small uh, signals to the telescope in order to to stay very 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 stable in in our science star. Great. We have another question. This, this is a little bit more easy in the sense of what kind of science do you do and why? Well, my, my field of research is in black holes, stellar mass black holes, which are um, the remnants of the uh, of very massive stars that, um, well, after the supernova explosion, uh, form a black hole. And this is the, the type of, of uh, objects that I, I study. Great. So they're asking us about the comet Neowise. Uh, has the telescope seen the comet Neowise? Well, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say that we are close, or, or not, Jesus? Yeah, we are close, and, and actually the, the comet is barely visible from, from the southern hemisphere. Um, but right now we are close because of the coronavirus situation. We have another question from Rose who is asking, how has working at ESO enriched your life and your CV as, a, as an astronomer? Well, a lot, actually. Um, ESO offers uh, a lot of possibilities of uh, being in contact with a lot of astronomers that come to the observatory, that visit us, that uh, provide us a lot of uh, new views of doing science. Uh, it's also a unique place to work with uh, very close to, to the instrumentation. Uh, I will learn a lot about uh, the instrument, the technical, uh, the, all the details that the, the telescope, as big as, uh, as of any of the VLT or the UTs, is. Uh, it's, uh, it's an amazing place, and I think there are, there are very few uh, research institutions in astronomy that can offer such a variety of, uh, of knowledge or, or uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's magic, I don't know. Uh, it, it helped me a lot in, in improving my, my own science, my, my career, everything. It's great. This is for Hernan. Uh, how we can go uh, to Paranal and visit Paranal? Oh, of course, very... now we are, we are close. We have to clarify that point that we are close. But how, how we can reach Paranal? Well, if you are from abroad, uh, not from Chile, I will recommend uh, to come to Santiago de Chile. And from Santiago de Chile, you have to drive or fly from Santiago. Let me see if I can show you this better. Um, here we go. And go to La Serena, but excuse me, to Antofagasta. If you see from Santiago, you can fly to Antofagasta or drive to Antofagasta. It's 1,300 kilometers, so I recommend to fly. And then go uh, drive from Antofagasta to the observatory. Every Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning and 2 p.m., we have this uh, guided tour, okay? And they are free. 
So the only thing you need is to go with your own car or your own transportation from Antofagasta to the observatory, which is at 130 kilometers south from Antofagasta, two hour driving around that. So you have to book in advance, of course, in our webpage, uh, ESO.org. And uh, of course, we'll let you know whenever we will be open again. So you are welcome and we will love to have you with us and show you all what we have shown you today in this virtual tour. We, we come back with Jesus, with the question for Jesus. Say, hi, what made you to decide to study astronomy? Well, um, well I, I knew this since I was a, a child, actually. Uh, uh, I'm from the Canary Islands. Um, there are also very nice observatories here. So there is a, a huge community of astronomers in, in, the, in the islands. And since the very beginning, since, uh, since I was a child, I, I, I wanted to know more about astronomy. Uh, I don't know exactly when, but it, it was uh, when I was very young. I, I asked my parents to, uh, to go to the top of the island and, and watch the stars. And every time there was a, a new comet, I wanted to, to go there. I, I don't know, it was a, I don't know, a motivation since I, since I was a child. I, I cannot answer a real uh, a precise date. It was just what I wanted to do. <laughs> Great. There's a, there's a question. So, so uh, Jesus, do you work alone during your uh, time in Paranal or do there is a team um, who gathers to work uh, together in order to do the observations? We're a team, always a, always a team, and it's always better to work with someone else, actually. Uh, so we are usually an astronomer and an operator in every telescope. Uh, so we are so two people per, per telescope working uh, at the same time. So and how do you, do, how do you um, meet in, in, in that sense? Uh, do you have meetings or do you meet at the top of the mountains, how, how is it the regular life over there? Yeah, there are two meetings every day. Uh, one meeting in the morning, very early, at around eight to nine, uh, where there is a discussion of what happened during the following night. Every During the night, we are writing every, I don't know if there is an issue or, or there is a problem in, in any of the systems. We can write um, uh, an email, say, uh, all these emails are gathered at the uh, very early in the morning, and there is this uh, meeting at the very beginning of the of the day where they co they they share all the information, and and the team, which is basically uh, engineers, have to work on that and fix all the issues. There is another meeting just before the the sunset, where uh, the astronomers and, and the engineers talk together. The engineers tell us what they've been doing during the day, all the issues that were fixed. And we astronomers uh, prepare for the night. Uh, we meet with, uh, with the coordinator of the mountain um, who assign us different tasks or, um, or, or tell us uh, that there is a specific issue or, or something special that is going to happen during the night. And then we start the night after, after the sunset. Great. We have another question related to uh, who decide what to observe? Do you decide that, or uh, how how can I apply for time, uh, observation time, at the BLT? Yeah, well, um, we don't decide in the sense that uh, we have some freedom, but the decision is taken beforehand. Uh, so, twice per year, every six months, uh, there is a, what we call the, the call for proposals. So, all the astronomers apply for time uh, to use the uh, ESO telescopes. Uh, they prepare a formal proposal. It's about 10 pages long uh, where they describe what they want to uh, observe, why, uh, very detailed. And they write a scientific uh, proposal and a technical proposal. And this, uh, this proposal is then evaluated by an international uh, committee that decides uh, which proposal should be actually observed. Uh, 
usually we receive around a thousand proposals every six months, but we don't have time for all of them. So this scientific committee decides or make a ranking of the best proposals uh, that will get the time. And there is a cut and all the proposals that don't, don't reach that mark are rejected and they don't get the time. So in this proposal, the astronomer uh, writes all the details of the target that they want to observe. Once this uh, scientific evaluation is done, we uh, also make a technical evaluation in the sense that we, we check that all the numbers that the, that the astronomer wrote in the proposal actually fits with uh, uh, something that is possible to do in the telescope. And then once all this process is done, uh, all the, the proposals that we, that were above the, the the cut are observed going to into our system, and we on the mountain uh, execute the observation. And the decision of uh, what target we observe or not it depends on the uh, actual conditions. For instance, uh, there are astronomers that need uh, very 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 clear uh, night, uh, so we have to execute those uh, those targets first. If on the contrary, the night is not that clear, let's say there are some, some clouds or, or, or the quality of the night is not perfect, we then go uh, to a different proposal that can be executed with, uh, uh, with those conditions. But our, our, uh, we, we cannot decide, uh, for instance, we cannot observe our own uh, targets. That's completely forbidden. It's everything in the in the framework of this scientific evaluation that decides which proposals or which targets are, are the best. Thanks, uh, Jesus. In the meantime, that you breathe, both uh, you and uh, Jesus and, and, and Nan, I'm going to, uh, I would like to say that we are posting right now a survey um, about these visits. Please fill the, this form, it's only five questions. Uh, and, and it's mainly related to the quality of the tours. We would like to um, keep uh, uh, doing this uh, experience and in a better way. So please ask, tell us what we're doing okay, what we're doing really good, what we are not doing so good. So please tell us it's only one minute um, and it's not any painful, painful form. Let's come back to the, um, to the um, questions. This is from Patty 61 tool. So are you there all the time or are astronomers working in shift? So, so, so to speak of X months or then are replaced by others uh, astronomers? We work in shifts, yes. Um, usually in shifts between six to 14 days or nights. Uh, and then we have a replacement. We usually spend one day with uh, our counter shift uh that is replacing us so we can talk a little bit about the the issues that we had in the in the previous week or two weeks that we were working there and uh so the the, the new crew is aware of a of possible situation that may happen uh, and yes, then we go down we go back to to santiago great this is a question this was one of the first questions that we received so uh it's it it's is there a canteen at Paranal or something like that related? Maybe we, we can show and then and, and yeah, exactly. Jesus can, can tell us. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, there are, we have the, the canteen is exactly that uh, place that Netman is showing us. Uh, this is the residencia, the, like, the hotel where we, where we live. That part that Hernan is showing is where we, where we have lunch, dinner, um, we drink coffee. We need a lot of coffee. Uh, <laughs> exactly. That this is the, this is the area where we where we live, which is about uh, one two two kilometers from the from the top of the um, of the summit where the telescopes are. This is the the actual place where we where we have lunch or dinner and breakfast and everything. I must say that it's uh, the breakfasts are amazing. <laughs> we have time for two more questions, so just send us as soon as possible. We have one. Will you be working on ELT2, Jesus? Uh, I would like to, but um, I don't know. Let's see if I'm still at this or when ELT comes. But I, I'd love to work also in ELT. 
great. Um, in the meantime, where we wait for the last question, um, I would like to invite all the people who is wondering if we have these tours in Spanish. Yes, we have these tours in Spanish. This afternoon at uh, 5.30 Chilean time, we will have a tour in Spanish to Observatorio La Silla, to La Silla Observatory. Uh, with another uh, guest, we will have uh, Linda, who is also astronomer at ISO. Um, so we received one more question. Um, and we, we are starting to receive questions for that tour. So please just send us to uh, in our social networks. We are receiving a lot of greetings too. So I don't want to say uh, I'll leave this tour without saying thank you for, for all your comments and questions that we are re being receiving all the time. Okay, so we have a, um, we have a last question here uh, for Jesus. What would you like to do uh, in the following uh, days after the pandemic, if you have to observe uh, an object in the sky? What what kind of object would you observe? Uh, right now, I I really don't mind. I I'm looking forward to going back to to Paranal. I really miss this place. It's it's a very unique uh, anything. I'm really eager to to go back to Paranal. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks, Emmanuel. Um, thanks for uh, Jesus, too. Well, thank you, everyone who was with us today and invite you to visit our webpage, uh, ESO.org. We have tons of pictures, images, videos, and information, the latest news uh, in astronomy. So please uh, visit us, and you can download all those videos and, vi and, and pictures uh, in different formats. So welcome, thank you, and remember today uh, at 5 30 p.m. Chilean time, we will have the virtual tour to La Silla Observatory. So thank you again and have a very nice week. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Enan. Thanks, Jesus. Uh, we will be waiting for you uh, again in another tour, maybe. Thanks. Pleasure. Thanks for your time. And Bye -bye. goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.